I just believe that God has something to speak to every single one of you. I believe that Jesus is going to speak to your heart. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit tonight about how to hear the voice of God. How many of you guys want to hear God's voice? Going to want to hear it? Well, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about it. But first, we're going to get into Romans chapter 12. If you're with me, would you stand to your feet for the reading of God's word? Stand to your feet. We're going to have verse 1 and 2 up on the screen. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet all over, all over this place. Verse 1, it says this, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God, because all He has done, say all He has done, all He has done for you, let, let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God, say let God, transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Father, we thank you for your word. Again, tonight, we just ask, Lord, that those who have ears tonight, God, would hear what your spirit's speaking. Father, we thank you that you have a good and perfect and pleasing will for our lives. God, we thank you that every single one of us tonight has a general call to be your witness, a general call to make Jesus known around this world. But Lord, I know tonight that you're going to speak directly to some hearts tonight. And Lord, I just pray that whatever you say, God, tonight we would be listening and that Lord, we learn to obey. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys may be seated. So it's a, this, is, this is one of my favorite things to be able to talk about. I love talking about the will of God. I love talking about the future. How many of you guys love future? You love kind of like, hey, in a lo- like, I guess this is like history, but in my mind, I'm thinking like, there's no way this is history because this seems like, seems like future, but in a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Anybody like Star Wars in this place? Oh, I love Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I'm like, how does, how does that even happen? How is that a long time ago? I mean, they have, like, they have all these new technology and stuff, like lightsabers. Where are those at? So I don't know, but I'm a little confused there. How many of you guys like some, like some futuristic kind of movies? you like that kind of stuff? Is that fun? So I don't know. I'm always, my mind's always spinning about what's next. I love to think about what's next, what's going to happen. Um, you know, I'm always, I'm always just like, hey, I, I want, I want to know. I just want to be in the know. And so there's something, something about future as we talk about, you know, just especially when it comes to what God wants, because I ultimately, I want what, I want what God has for me, because I just believe it's the best thing. It's going to be the best thing. And so um, there's, there's this like, there's just a struggle. I, I think all over the world, people are just trying to do something to try to get uh, some sort of figure or God or something to try to speak. And so people will do crazy things to try to just imagine or try to get this, this, um, entity or whatever they think of a God or whatever religion it may be. They think, what could I do to hear from this? But our, our Christians, we, we want to be able to hear from God. And um, I just remember one of the nights when I was at camp and I was a student and uh, I was, remember, I was kind of a troublemaker. Remember the rocket launcher, the whole Nerf gun thing? Yeah. So that's me. And uh, I'm, I'm a camper and this is before like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, this is like pre, it's not pre-conversion, but it's like pre, like, I guess, being a little bit more uh, like Jesus. So I was, I, was a little bit, I was a little bit bad. Okay, so this is like, don't judge me for this, but this is it's just one of those nights. It was an incredible night. It was a night where it was kind of a, a night we were talking about the Holy Spirit. And so it was just like kind of a, kind of a real kind of somber kind of night. It was real like kind of low key after service. Everyone's kind of walking around like, man, that was an amazing night. It was just such a good night. God is so good. And it was like people, people weren't all hyped up. It was just like, man, just awesome. Just, just, just such a good night. And we remember just kind of um, being out there by the, by the pop stand and people are just kind of a little bit more chill that night, everything's. And I'm thinking like, I'm just like this, you know, this pastor's kid, this director's kid who's thinking like, we got to spice this up. This, this, is, this is a little bit low. Like we got to, it's, it's hump day. Like we got, we got to get up the hump. Like we got to do something fun. And so my brother and I, um, when you get two director's kids together, it's just like, it's bad news, okay? It's just, just bad news. And so we, we got together and we were like, look, 
you know, we just wanted to kind of single someone out, think, man, there's, there's kind of a, you know, if, if you see a pack kind of going, you see like, you know, in the, you know, maybe it's like the National Geographic or different things, you're watching like the Discovery Channel and like there's a pack of, you know, like wildebeest or something, like what happens to the one Lone Ranger, the one that's like kind of lit's left behind? It gets like picked off, right? Like that's the one that everyone targets. Well, we found that one Lone Ranger um, that was off by himself and he was, he, I mean, he may have been having a spiritual moment. It was, it was probably a really, really cool moment he was having, but we're like, man, we got, this kid needs some energy. This kid needs something fun. Like, you know, just let's spice it up a little bit. So we decided to kind of uh, go, to the, go to the pop stand, get some popcorn. And uh, we're like a little hungry, but we're like, well, look, let's, let's just go, let's go mess with this kid just a little bit. That's horrible intentions, horrible motives. But we're like, let's go mess. So we kind of like walk around, kind of sneak back, sneak back behind the bushes. And we kind of got like a little bit of leverage. So we we're up, a, up above him. There's some bushes. And then down below this bench where this kid's just sitting, eating his nachos. Okay. So it's like, man, this kid's like, man, I, I don't know. Maybe he's just lonely. He just needs, needs some friends to like help. And so we just, we decided like maybe it'd be like, just, just get his attention. I don't know. Like throw some popcorn at him. I don't know. Just so, so we just thought like, hey, let's, let's just kind of, let's just kind of throw the popcorn. And so we, we, we decided to do that and we hit him. It was like, sweet. Of course. Remember, I got the rocket launcher. Remember, I, I'm good at this. So we hit him and uh, all of a sudden we like, kind of just chuckle like, oh, he didn't see us. Like, and then all of a sudden we hear this kid, he says, God, <laughs> is that you? <laughs> And remember, remember this kid's like off by himself, okay? And so all of a sudden, my brother and I were like, oh no. He thinks God's speaking to him through popcorn right now. He was having a spiritual moment. And we didn't want to mess that up. So we left. And the kid just probably still thinks maybe God spoke to him through popcorn. In fact, maybe the kid, maybe the kid's now preaching at some other camp, and uh, and he's he's talking about how God speaks in amazing ways, and it could be through popcorn. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. I feel like so bad, and I don't have a chance. To, like I have no idea what this kid's name is. I have no idea. So if you know this kid, and you know this message is going around, you can go ahead and just tell this kid, hey, you know, it was it was Griffin, and it was his brother Dylan, and 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 he says he's sorry. Okay, he's sorry. So I, I just, I feel horrible, I feel bad, but that is just an example of someone thinking, man, could it be that God could speak in a random way like that? I don't know what you believe. I don't know, I don't know what it is. And I know it's in the word of God where God speaks through donkeys, he speaks through the rocks, he speaks, he, he can speak through a lot of different things. But in this case, apparently, maybe the kid thinks it's through popcorn. But I, I just, I feel bad. I feel horrible. So don't judge me, okay? Right, right, right off the bat. I'm sorry. But I just, I want to I wanna kind of get into a little bit of things today. So it's going to be kind of a little bit of education. So if you have your notes with you, and you, you're taking notes, I encourage you to write these things down. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the different ways that God speaks. First of all, um, it, we got to know about God's will. We got to know a little bit about God's character. We got to know a little bit about what the Bible says about God's will. First of all, number one is that God's will is not a mystery. God's will is not a mystery. It's not some crazy way out there. Just it, his will is, is, is not a mystery. Ephesians 5, 17 says, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Is that not like pretty plain and simple right there. Hey, don't be foolish. Understand what the Lord's will is. So it's not a mystery. It's not something crazy. It's, it's something I think for a lot of us, we, we think about maybe God's will is, is, is just some, some far-fetched thing or like, hey, what is it that God has planned for me? Uh, maybe it's something I won't, I won't get to know until way later in life. Or, you know, maybe, maybe right now I just, I want to I wanna kind of focus on what I'm doing right now, but maybe way later in life I'll be able to do something because it's just far out there. And maybe I just won't be able to understand it. But God's saying, no, don't be foolish. Understand what the Lord's will is. It's not a secret. It's not something that God's trying to hide from you. Okay, so under, understand that God's not up in heaven just being like, hey, he hears you praying and saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if I want to like, I'm not sure if I want to tell him about it. I'm not sure if I want to do that. God, God's like, he's not hiding his will from you, okay? The reality is that God's given a lot of his will already. It's called the word of God and it's his promises to us. And it's called the known will of God. 
And a lot of times we focus about the unknown will. A lot of times we focus on like maybe the things that we don't know about God. And, and, and we're like, we're so focused on God, what do you want me to do? Maybe when I grow up, what, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to date this, this girl? Do you want, for you girls, you're like, do you want me to date this boy? Or, or, or what, is it that you're, what is it that you're trying to just try to figure out and try to guess about God? Well, God's will is not a mystery. And he's asked us to do quite a bit of things. And the first thing is really important for us to, to say, look, don't focus so much on the unknown will of God. Focus on what he's already revealed to you. There's a lot of things that maybe God's, God's not giving you yet. And he's saying, hey, look, until you can do the things I've already told you to do, then, then once you got that, then I'll give you a little bit more. Okay, so focus on the Focus on the things that are already known, and then God will make it a little bit more, more clear to you. So God's will is not a mystery. It's, it's not something that he's trying to hide from you. And, and the biggest thing is to understand, just like, just like this principle, and I know, like, I know the little story about this kid's kind of funny and really harsh. Some of you guys like hate me for doing this, like with the popcorn, and I'm, again, I'm sorry, so don't, don't hold against me. But God's, God's not someone who's just trying to like kind of just, you know, just kind of eavesdrop on our conversations. He's not someone that's like, hey, I'm just, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm just, I'm just like, I'm, I'm out there, but you guys are having this thing, and, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm not just, I'm not just trying to like come in and, and just, just kind of listen a little bit in on that. God's like, God's fully engaged. God knows your thoughts. He know, He knows exactly your intentions. He knows your motives. And God, the bottom line, He's trying to engage in a conversation with you. God wants to speak to you. He wants to. He, he's, he's, again, he's not hiding it. He wants to engage in a conversation with you. From the very beginning, you got to know it's not some crazy mystery. And so if that's the case, then how does God speak to people? And how does God call people? There's a few different ways I want to list, and you guys can write these down. I'm not going to go a, a lot of time into this, but this is good for reference. Some of you guys will identify automatically saying, yeah, I, I believe God's already spoken to me like that. Or, or, or you say, maybe later you write these down, and then later you can kind of point back and say, yeah, these are some different ways. I know God speaks to God in a lot of different ways. He calls people to himself, but he does it in a, in a variety of ways. Number one, a miraculous call. God can call someone miraculously, something crazy, something divine, where it's just like Saul on the road to Damascus. Saul was, Saul we later know as Paul. You guys know Paul? He wrote more, more than half the New Testament. This guy is, this guy is uh, amazing. Well, he wasn't so amazing when he was persecuting Christians, and he's on the road to Damascus going to go do this. Well, in the middle of that, a bright shining light comes, and it's Jesus Christ, and he reveals himself to Paul, or, or to Saul in this case, before his name was changed. So Saul is blinded by this light, and God calls Saul right then, and he speaks out to him. He says, why are you persecuting me? What are you, what are you, what are you doing? And, and it's pretty, pretty crazy, and it's like, man, that was like in your face right there. And how many of you guys wish that like God would just shine some light, and like, hey, how many of you guys are like, man, God, just blind me. God, just do it. I don't know. You guys are brave. You guys are super brave if that's the case. But he does that sometimes. It's a miraculous call. Sometimes God, God does something that's super miraculous. The, the second way that God calls people is an ever-present call. Jeremiah was called this way. Jeremiah was an Old Testament prophet. The Bible says that he was knit together in his mother's womb. That God called him when he was in his mother's womb. So even before he was born yet, God already called him. And so from the very beginning, it's kind of this ever-present call that like you just, you can't point to a time where you're like, yeah, 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 God called me. Like it was, it was like, like Saul on the road. Like you can't point to a specific time, but you just know like I'm called. I feel God's called me. I, I, I don't know how to else to explain it. I just feel like from the very beginning, God's called me. That's an ever-present call. Number three, it's a growing conviction. Growing conviction. And this, I would say, is the majority of the time how people are called. And conviction meaning God is drawing you closer to him. God is doing, God is, God's revealing things gradually. And so this is something, it could be that it's a, it's a burden on your heart. Some of you guys, um, you see that there's injustice in the world. Some of you guys see something like human trafficking. And it just makes you sick to see that that kind of stuff can happen in our world. Or you hear about abortion. Or you hear about certain, certain causes and certain things, and it's like, man, I mean, I, that messed me up when I heard about that. 
Or, or maybe some of you, you, you say, man, I just, I've always loved kids. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I just, I just want to, I want to do something to like help children. And, and then like, as you get older, more and more, you just grow a, a, a deeper conviction towards saying, I, I feel like I want to do this. I feel like I'm called to do this. It's kind of a, it's, it's kind of a growing conviction. And God, the majority of the time he calls people that way. As we, as we kind of walk closer to him, God gradually reveals more and more of his call. The fourth way that God calls people, and again, there's a lot of ways, but these are the four that we're going to list tonight, is a divine intersection. Divine intersection. And this is, this is a way that basically people just stumble upon it. It may not be like some miraculous shining light, so it's not the first way, but this is, this is distinct because it's a divine intersection. It could be a conversation with someone. As you're talking with someone, it's like, man, I, I had no idea this, this conversation would happen. Or it could be something where like at youth camp, you had no idea that it would, just, it would just hit you, but you met someone here and they talked to you about something, or maybe you were meeting God at an altar and it was just a divine intersection where you're like, this is, I can't explain this. Or maybe, maybe it was a setback or, or something where you're like, hey, I was doing this and all of a sudden I couldn't do that anymore. And so God showed me a new path and it was a divine intersection. It just changed your direction all of a sudden. That's another way that God can call people. And so write those down. I'll, I'll list them again one more time if, if you were taking notes and missed any. But miraculous call is number one. An ever-present call, number two. Number three is a growing conviction. The majority of the time people are called. Number four is a divine intersection. So you guys can write those down. Again, this is a little bit of an education and we're going to get into a little bit more because I, I think we've got to unpack some of these things so we can understand them. But we know that God, that's how God calls people, okay? He, he calls them to himself. But God speaks in different ways. So he calls in those ways, but he speaks to people in a lot of different ways. This, could, this may not be a calling, but it's more of like God speaking to you about, hey, there's, there's sin in your life and you need, to, you need to make that right. Or he's speaking to you about something where maybe it's a, maybe it's a burden for a friend and, and you, it's, it's to go talk to your friend and to encourage them. God speaks to people in a lot of different ways too. And I'll list these. And this is, this is really also very important. Number one, when God speaks to people, this is the majority of the time how he speaks is through his word. Through his word, the Bible, the 66 books that we have been reading even this week, we've been diving into some, some of those different ch chapters in those books. The Bible is majority of the time that God speaks to us. So in order for us to, again, know God's unknown will, we gotta focus on his known will. Well, he's given us, he's given us his word. If you're not reading this daily, if you're not in this daily, then, then don't even ask the question, God, what do you want me to do? You have, you have no excuse to say, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. If you're not in this, because it's like, it's kind of a given. It's kind of like, well, I've already given you this here. So like, it's, it's like, it's like talking to one of your friends and they've already, you know, you've already told them the answer. Like, 20 times. And they're like, what was that again? And you're like, oh, are you kidding me? Like, it's just, it's, it's this. I, I, mean, I keep telling you. Well, God's like, he's already given us the answer. The solution is Jesus. And through all of these things, we're, we, haven't done, we haven't even taught anything new this week. I, I, don't, I don't know if you understand that. I may have been communicating some things, but I've been focusing on the word of God this week. And so God is, God's word is so good. It, 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 it's active. It's, it's alive. And God, God's word is, is living. And so for us, we got to get in his word. So that's the majority of the time that God speaks. It's through his word. When we, when, we get, when we get a hold of God's word, that's when he gets a hold of us. If we can, if we can grab hold of God's word, that's when, he, that's when he grabs hold of us. Number two, God does, in fact, speak with an audible voice. Now, personally, I've never heard God's audible voice, where I can like literally hear with my ears, my physical ears. I've never been able to hear God's voice in that way. I know that God does that. These stories do exist and they happen today. They're more rare. And the reason I believe that they're rare is because Jesus has already poured out his spirit and the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts and the Holy Spirit bypasses our ears and he gets directly to his heart. So it's like, why, 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 even, why even speak to our ears when God can speak right to our heart, Right? Our friends can speak to our ears. Our parents can speak to our ears. Everyone else can speak to our ears. But God has a special way of being able to speak directly to our heart. And that's the third way that God speaks. 
So yes, an audible voice, it's rare, but Jesus is able to, get, to directly speak to our heart. And this is, this is called an inner conviction. And I want to kind of explain it. It's not like all of a sudden your heart pumping and it's like, okay, if it, if, it, if it pumps like this, it's like Morse code. If it pumps three times, okay, the God's saying this. No, it's, some of you are like, kind of confused. God speaks to my heart, what? No, God, God speaks to your heart, but he comes as like, almost like, it may even sound like kind of your voice. It's like maybe kind of in your head or different things. But look, the way you know it's, it's God is if it aligns with his word. If it's some crazy thought and you're like, oh man, maybe I should go like, punch my friend. God, are you telling me to go punch my friend? God's like, no. I ne- no, that's like, no. That's, that's you, and that's foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Don't punch your friend. Not cool. But if it's more along lines of like, oh, maybe I should go, my friend's sitting there alone, and no, don't go throw popcorn at him either. That's, I was not listening to God on that one. Um, but your friend's sitting there alone, and they're, and they're crying, and you're thinking, man, maybe I don't know, maybe I should go talk to them. I mean, would that be, a, would that be like, would Jesus do something like that? Would, would Jesus go comfort them? Hmm, do I have to think about that? No, don't think about that. Man, do I have to pray about that? Don't, Jesus is already speaking to you. Go encourage your friend. It's like, it's like one of those, it's very simple. It's, it's, not, it's not something crazy. So inner conviction, and conviction, a lot of times we get confused with the word conviction and guilt. Conviction isn't, isn't gonna make you feel shame. Isn't gonna make you feel bad. Conviction is going to show you where you are and where God is, and it's going to draw you closer to Him. Conviction always leads you closer to God. It never draws you away from God. Guilt is of the enemy. It's a lie saying you can't be with God. And so guilt will always, always pull you away from God, but conviction will draw you closer to Him. You guys understand that? You guys with me? You good? So we're going to get through these here. The other way that God speaks to people, so by His Word, audible voice, to your heart. And then fourth, he speaks through people. God can use people to speak to you. Even last night, as your leaders were praying over you, God was using your leaders to encourage you, to speak life over you. That's one example. God uses people. He could use your parents to just, you know, bring correction to something. And some of you think maybe, maybe my, my parents are wrong in different ways. My parents, I, I, they, don't, they don't know me. They don't, they don't understand me. And I, I get it. But, but God has appointed them as your parent, as your authority. And so God's going to bless you from obeying them. But God's put people in your life to help you, to guide you, to lead you. And I just encourage you, if you don't have wise counsel in your life, if you don't have someone who's pouring into you, come go talk to your leader. Your leaders are here. They're, they're, they're amazing people. And I just believe that they're, the reason they're here, even this week, is because they believe in you. And so if you don't have wise counsel, you're going you're gonna to be kind of led astray. And you're going to be listening to foolishness. So if you're in the wrong group of friends, if you want to know God's will, get with the right group of friends. Get with people who are going to encourage you, who are going to lead you closer to Christ. Number five is through events. God can speak to you through events. I'm not just talking about like an event like camp or an event like uh, conference. And those are amazing things. And I believe you, we all need to be there. And those are amazing things. But events meaning sometimes it's open doors and closed doors. Sometimes God gives us opportunity in ways and sometimes he closes opportunity. And you're, you're praying, hey God, is it your will for me to go to this school? You know, and maybe at this point you're like, you know, well, my parents chose that school or whatever that, that may be. But maybe your parents are trying to get you into a school and maybe, maybe you're trying to get into one, but all of a sudden you didn't, you, you, did, you, couldn't, you couldn't get in because the door was closed. Well, maybe it was God's will that you would not be in that school. So he already kind of led you in that way. And some of you guys, even leaders and, and some of you also, you've been kind of in, in, on this journey and praying for God's direction. Well, God, God does that through open and closed doors. And so those are just different ways God calls people, the way he different speak, speaks people. And I'll go through the ones, there's five, about how God speaks to people by his word, audible voice to your heart, through people, and then through events. The number, and then uh, uh, we're going through this path on what, how, how we know uh, what God's will is. First, I talked about God's will is not a mystery. So this is like the second big bullet point. This is, this is uh, understanding that God's will is simple. God's will is simple. It's not complicated. Okay, so not only is it not a mystery, but it's simple. It's, it's super, super simple. What is God's will? What's God's will? What we, what we were created for is relationship with him. We were created to worship God. That's God's will. 
that we would worship him, that we would know him. And what is, what is worship? It's our, it's our response to Jesus. It's an appropriate response to him. And so God's, God's will is that we'd have relationship with him. It's our, it's our, it's our inmost immediate expression to knowing him. We were created for it. Number three, God's will is different. And this is where kind of, people can kind of track with one and two. They think maybe yeah, there's a mystery. You know, it's, 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 not so, it's not so mystical, different things. It's, 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 it's very, very simple, okay? Very simple. People, people can kind of get past one and two. But they don't, they kind of like divide at this point, okay? So this is the point where I think we've got to really look and unpack a little bit. And it's the fact that God's will is different. It's different than our will. And we talked about it even, even last night, this craving, this desire in us, the lie of the enemy. And sometimes it's not just even the enemy or the devil who's trying to tempt us in something. Sometimes it's ourselves, it's our own flesh, it's our own, own desire and trying to, trying to do something. And we, we may have a desire to go do some amazing thing, and it's a good thing, but it's not God's thing. And you may be so busy at school and you're in every sport and you're doing all these things and it's really cool, but you're wondering like, why am I so stressed out? I'm just in junior high. Why am I doing all these different things? Well, have you asked God what his will is? Because it may be different than yours. And the fact is, it is different than your will. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse eight through nine, it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Proverbs 16, verse 9 says, In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. The Lord determines his steps. Think about that. God has an amazing plan, a great plan for you, but it's very different than yours. His ways are higher than our ways. His, his thoughts aren't our thoughts. They're, they're higher than ours. He's God, remember? He knows all things. And here we are. We, don't, we, we can't understand it all. We can't get there yet. And so we got to understand that God's will is different than our will. And the fourth one, and this is the final thing that we need to understand about God's will, and we need to believe this with everything in us. And I think we wrestle with this. But it's God's words true in this. It says, it's this, that God's will is good. God's will is good. Remember in Romans 12, verse 2, it says God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect. Good, pleasing, and perfect. God's will is not to harm you. Jeremiah 29, 11, verse 13, through 13. A lot of people read verse 11 and they just stop there. We're gonna, we're gonna keep reading a little bit. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans for, to prosper you and not to harm you. God is not against you. You understand that? God's not against you, he's for you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Isn't that an amazing promise that when we call upon God and we come and we pray to him, that God actually listens to us? No, he doesn't have to listen to us. He's God. We're just, we're just humans. We're just his creation. But God actually, he says in his word, it's true right here. It's, he says when we call upon him and we come to him, that he listens to us. What an amazing promise. Verse 13 says, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. God's looking for your heart. Remember, if man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at your heart. So when you seek him, and when you seek him with all your heart, you can find him. That's, that, what that's saying is God's not a mystery. A lot of people think about like, man, if, if the light would just flicker a few times, then I know maybe God will speak to me. Or, or, or if, 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 I don't know if you've ever done that. He's like, God, if you're real, would you just, would you just do something? Would you just, God's saying, I'm here. I've been here all along. Remember what we talked about even the first night. God made the first move. You, if you understand that Jesus came to this earth, that he did all those things for you, you'd understand that God's not trying to hide. <laughs> He's not in some corner. He says, when you seek me and you come to me, you will, what? You'll find me. God's a God who can be found, amen? It's an amazing promise.
I want to ask, because we're going to get right, right into this even response time. I just believe that God's going God's to speak to some hearts right now. And I ask that as the worship team gets ready, I want to go a little bit deeper into uh, in a, little bit of, a little bit of my story. I told you about when I was 15, God spoke to me at the altar, and I, I thought, man, God, you got some big plan for me, right? I said, I don't know what it is, but I'm excited. I called my dad. He said, I'm really proud of you, Griffin. And then from there, you know, my whole world was, I feel, I feel like completely messed up when my dad passed away. But what I didn't tell you is what I thought I heard God say. I thought when he said, Griffin, I've got a really big plan for you. I want to do something really big with your life. What I heard, because that's how he said it to my heart. But what I heard was that, Griffin, I know you love baseball. You're going to make it to the major leagues. And you're going to be like Ken Griffey Jr. Any Ken Griffey Jr. fans in this place? You got some, some Seattle Mariners in here. So I, I loved Ken Griffey Jr. That was my favorite player. I got to meet him when I was young, and it was such a cool privilege. I gave him WWJD little necklace, and it was awesome. And I introduced him to Jesus. Um, he already knew what WWJD meant. It was what would Jesus do, and I was very surprised. But he wore it for the game, and it was awesome. So in my, my life, I grew up playing baseball. Hence my hat right here, the Diamondbacks. Um, my, my home state had to rep it a little bit. Um, this is like going back old school too. So you guys don't give me the, don't give me the boo. That's not cool. <laughs> but I grew up loving, loving baseball. My dad coached me when I was growing up. And so this was such a fun thing for me. I loved baseball. And I, I just believed with everything in me that I had, I had just like maybe a path that God was going to take me to the major leagues. And I had, I had already mapped out because I was, I was practicing my signature. I was believing, man, this is so cool. The next year after camp, when God said, he said to me, he said, Griffin, you know, I got something really big planned for life. That was awesome. That was so cool. I remembered I held on to that. Well, the next year at camp, when I was 16, God spoke again to me at an altar. And what he said, he said, Griffin, you're going to speak. So I'm like, oh, yes, this is awesome. So I'm going to have interviews after the game. This is incredible. So I got to be ready for all, all, the, all the glory will be to God. I just practiced it. I practiced it. I'm like, after I hit the home run and that we win, walk off, it's incredible. The crowd goes wild. I'm going to believe that this is the next thing. Like, I, this, is, this, is, this is awesome. So I got to prepare my speaking skills. I got to be able to do this because I'm going to have to give up, give an interview. This is great. And so I just, I just kind of went through that journey, went on a path, and I, I, I believe that I wanted to do something for God. It's, you know, all the most pure motives I felt that this was good. I was going to play baseball, and God was going to take me to the major leagues. I was going to have a platform for ministry to be able to, to reach people. I wanted to help people. I loved, I loved seeing Christian athletes like, like a Tim Tebow, you know, like, or a Russell Wilson. Those guys are amazing. But I just, there you go. There's your moment. Let it shine. But I, I just, I, I, wanted, I wanted with everything in me to be able to be like that. I wanted to be able to say, I want to reach people. I want to do those things. So what I did was I took what God spoke to me and I said, God, you got a really big plan for my life and you want me to speak. Okay, so I was really afraid of any kind of public speaking. And so I don't know if any of you guys like afraid of public speaking a little bit. You're like, ah, I don't know if that's for me. Well, that was me. I, I just, I was like, man, I'm nervous in front of people. I don't know that I could do this. So I need, when I go to college, I want to, I want to get a degree in communication so I can better help my communication skills. So I got a degree in communications. I went to Evangel University in Springfield, Missouri, and one of our Assemblies of God colleges, and it was awesome. I, I was on scholarship for baseball, and I was, I was doing really, really well. And uh, baseball, again, it was like, I felt, man, if God, you really called me for this, I really felt he wanted me to go to a Christian school. And I wanted to kind of have that foundation, have that groundwork. So I went to Christian school, was able to do that, play baseball, had an incredible freshman year. And uh, I was just like, I mean, things were going really, really well. And um, I was a pitcher. And so I, 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 I just, I loved, I loved baseball so much. This was like my passion. And my sophomore year, going into sophomore year, I, I all of a sudden kind of, uh, when I was pitching during like a summer, a summer league, I, I had a strain in my back. All of a sudden, my back was real tight. And I was like, I kind of went in at the end of the game. And I was like, man, that doesn't feel right. That's not good. And I remember my fir the first pitch, I was kind of warming up. And I was like, I know it's like tight. It's not good. So I first pitch, I threw it. And I like hit the backstop. I was like, oh, my goodness. And all of a sudden, I just felt like a shooting pain from my low back all the way up to, all the way up to my neck. And I was like, that is not good. And I just all of a sudden told my coach, I'm like, I'm out of here. Like, I can't, I can't even pitch anymore. This is horrible. And I was like, oh, God, what in the world? Like, this is horrible. Like, I'm, I'm, supposed to, I'm supposed to be, you know, doing this. And it's not like I hadn't had an injury before. I've hurt myself, but like, this seemed really bad. 
And so I just, I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll kind of go kind of take it easy a little bit. You know, maybe I went and saw a chiropractor and all that kind of stuff too, just make sure I got adjusted. And I was like, man, I'm, okay, I'm back in the game. And I, and I got back up and I, I went, to go, went to go pitch again and same thing happened. Exact same thing happened. Just a huge strain, just a, a pulling back. I'm like, ah, and I just, I was like, man, I can't let this happen. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna force it through. Remember, I'm stubborn. I'm like, I'm just, I'm gonna do this because God's called me to this. I'm gonna make it happen. And so I just, I remember just being like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all for it. So I just, I kept pitching. And it was so painful. I just, I felt like I would grunt every single time. And, and, and I found out that I was like tearing like my oblique muscle from the side. I'm like, I've never even heard of people doing that. Like I was tearing like all these muscles around and I kept having to try to rehab it and getting, getting back in. I finally went to a doctor and they were like, a different chiropractor took an x-ray and they're like, okay, so you're pitching, you have a separated shoulder. Um, you, you have, you, you, your back is just way messed up. And uh, you're gonna need to like take it easy. I'm like, no, no. Like just, you know, they adjust me, get me back in. I tried it again and like same thing. Just, oh, like, and it was so frustrating. So frustrating. Cause I'm like, God, I feel like you've called me to this. Like I'm, I'm supposed to pitch, God. I even, I even wrote like at the back of the mountain. Like I, I, I would always do this. Like, and, and, and I would just remember, this is why I'm pitching. I would, I would even like, you know, write it right with my cleats in the sand. I, I do an FH like for him, just to remind myself, this is for you, God. This is for you. I'm gonna do this. So I, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get back up there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And I was just like, I just passionate about baseball. I'm like, this is gonna be it. Well, I, eventually I had to go to another doctor and I went to a specialist and they were able to kind of better assess the situation. They took x-rays of my back and, and they actually did an MRI and a, and, a, and a CAT scan actually on my back. So they went through and they did all these things and I'm like, okay, what's the deal? And, and they're like, Griffin, well, you have a, you have a fracture in your mid back and you have you have a fracture in your sacrum like your your last spinal spinal cord in the or on your on your spine and i'm like i'm the world like okay so what does that mean like how long how long is my you know recovery they're like well no griffin this is like you know maybe you can try to have your mid back kind of heal up or something like that but like what's on your last vertebrae your, your sacrum it's it's uh it's not good it's called spondylolysis which is like um, basically a fracture in my sacrum and it's, and it's basically sliding a little bit. And those of you guys that know, know sports or maybe know this injury, I guess uh, they said, they've studied up on this and actually the Seahawks, they said a half, like I think a third of the offensive line has this kind of condition. And they said, it's, it's manageable. You can, you can be able to do it. These guys have professional trainers. They're like, they're, they're in pain a lot. But I'm like, how did this even happen? He's like, I don't know. It could be genetic. It could be that maybe you heard it in high school football. I, I, I don't know. But all of a sudden, like Griffin, you've, you've got a decision to make. They said, Griffin, this isn't, this isn't career ending, but it's going to be career aggravating. I was like, what? So it's not, not career ending. I got a choice in this. Like, okay. And as my doctor said that, and he was just talking, you know, medical terms, he said, it's not career ending, but it's career aggravating. And I thought, well, man. And in that moment, I felt like God spoke to me through this doctor. He said, Griffin, it's not career ending, but it's going to be career aggravating. You can choose baseball, but for the rest of your life, you're going to know that it wasn't really baseball that I have for you. God said, I gave, I gave you baseball. But when I spoke to you at 15 and I spoke to you again at 16, I wasn't talking about baseball. You, you thought baseball. But what I had for you was much bigger plan. My will is different than your will. And if you'll trust me with baseball, if you'll give this up, I'll show you the plans I have for you. The plan for hope and a future. And in this moment, I felt so torn. I felt like, I felt like I, I can't give this up. This is everything. This is, I have no other plan B. Like, what else am I going to do? I, I, I've given myself to baseball. And, and I remember in that moment, God was saying, Griffin, trust me with this. And just like, just like Peter, right out there on the water, in the moment where he feels like he's so confident in fishing, he's so confident in the thing he's always known, there's a moment in time where he's got nothing. He's got nothing. He feels so vulnerable. And in a moment, Jesus says, if you trust me, I, I, I gave you fishing, but if you trust me with fishing, I'll teach, you, I'll teach you really how to fish. I'll teach you that I didn't call you just to fish for fish, but to fish for people. And in that moment, God was starting to stir in my heart and say, Griffin, if you trust me, I got a plan way bigger 
than, than baseball. I got a plan for you to do ministry, to do youth ministry, to, to, to do missions and, and all these dreams and all these things. And I remember the moment I had a choice to make. Either I could accept that God's perfect and pleasing will was truly as good as it is, or I could, I could default back to what I've always known and continue to struggle through it. And that moment I just, I knew I had to, I had to give it up. And I can't tell you how hard it was for me. And especially because how connected it was with my dad. Remember I said my dad coached me growing up, all these different things. And I remember even the moment I felt like, have I failed? Have I, have I, have I just, is this it? And God's like, trust me with it. I remember saying just even in the moment, you, if you trust me, I'll bless you. And I'll give you hope in the future. And I just believe that there are even students here tonight, some of you right now in your chair. God's got something so good, so amazing planned for you. But I don't know what it is, even so early in your life, you're just a junior higher. But the things that you're passionate about, the things that you love to do, the things, maybe it's, maybe it is a sport. But maybe it's, maybe it's a group of friends, maybe these different things. And you say, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm so holding so tightly to these things. Maybe it's, maybe it's, I, I, I like, I like to get, you know, I like to get new clothes. Or I like to, you know, I, I always looked, I, I gotta look, I lo- gotta look fresh all the time. Or maybe that you just, you got a boyfriend or girlfriend and you say, man, I just, maybe, maybe I found the one already. Maybe, maybe this is it. And God's saying, look, if you'll trust me and you'll let go. I'll show you how to fish. I'll show you the plans I have for you, the hope, the future that's far greater. And some of you guys, you're so early in the stage of knowing God's will. But I believe that God speaks to young people. He spoke to me right when I was 15. But some of you, you got some, there's some 11 year olds, there's some 12 year olds, there's some 13 year olds who have ears to hear tonight, but their hands are full. And for me, I can't tell you how hard it was to take that glove. My identity was wrapped up in that glove. And to lay it down and say, God, I'm dropping everything. And I'm ready for whatever you have for me. I'm listening, I'm willing. What nets are you holding? What is it that you're, 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 so, you're so caught up in right now that you're just, your focus is, your passion is, that maybe you're missing completely what God ultimately has for you? There's some of you in here that God wants you to be a missionary to your campus. He wants you to, to be able to tell your friends and go to school and tell people about Jesus. But right now, you're holding so tightly to this idea of popularity to a group of friends that you say, man, if I, if I, were, to, if I were to give that up, maybe people will make fun of me. I, may, I, I don't know what that would look like. And, and, you're, and you're so caught up in whatever it is that, that is so, you're so passionate about that God's just, God just saying, I, I, want you to, I just want you to trust me in this. If you'll let go, I have something to say to you. And right now, I, I want to just allow a time of response. I want every head bowed, every eye closed in this place. Nobody looking around. And I want to ask that simple question. What are you holding on to that God's saying, just let go? Just let go. With every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. If you say, Griffin, I've, I, feel like, I feel like God wants to speak to me. I feel like God wants to do something in my life, but I, I feel like I can't hear him because my hands are full because I'm already so busy doing other things. I feel like I can't hear him because I can't, I can't get in the word because I'm too busy watching TV or I'm, I'm too busy doing other things that I, I haven't positioned myself to receive all that God has for me. But you're holding so tightly to something. Tonight, if you just would respond by simply saying, Griffin, yeah, that's, that's me. I, I've been holding tightly to something 
but I, I know I can't fully hear from God. If that's you, would you just lift your hand high enough so I can see it all across this place? So I've been holding tightly onto it, and I know I need to let go. Come on, just one more moment. Hands, hands up all around. If that's you, say, I, I, I've just, I've been holding tightly, but you want to let go tonight. If you're raising your hand, would you stand to your feet? Would you stand to your feet right now? Would you come right now and just come meet, meet me right here at this altar? Slip out from your seat. Thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for being willing to to say, God, that's that's honest truth. I've been I've been holding on to this. And right now in this moment where God is, God's about to just speak, He's about to unleash a lot of things right now into hearts. He's about to give you dreams, He's about to give you desires, He's about to put new purpose in your life. For those of you that said, I've been holding so tightly on to these things, whatever it is, I mean, for me, it was, it was my baseball glove. It was kind of a symbol. It was something for me. It was, this is what I've been holding on too tightly to. If you just imagine one, like maybe an object or maybe something that would represent that thing, whatever the nets would be in your life. That could be a, if it's video games, it could be the controller. If it's, if it's a, if it's a boyfriend or, or, or girlfriend, maybe for you, it's, it's saying, look, I'm going to, I'm just going to. It, it, it could be my cell phone because I'm like, I, t I text them all the time or, or whatever it is. And you just imagine the object, whatever it is that's like, that's, that's hold, you're holding so tightly to that you can't, you feel like you can't, you can't let go. But tonight you know that God's asking you to, asking you to let go. If right now you just imagine whatever object that would be, would you just right now, would you just kind of lift it up to God with, with one hand raised up high? Say, God, this is, this is yours. God, this is, this is not mine. Lord, I, I'm ready to hear from you, but God, I know this is getting in the way. And with that raised up high, you say, Jesus, you see this. God, I, I'm sorry. I've made this an idol in my life. I put this before you. But God, I choose to set it down. In Jesus' name, can you set it down? Just put it, just put your hand right down like you're just setting it down and you're just putting it down. And just like Peter, you said, I'm dropping the nets. I'm dropping everything and I'm gonna choose to follow you. Could you right now just lift your hands empty to God? Lift your hands empty to God and say, God, my hands are empty. My ears are listening. I'm ready for you to speak to me. right now for every single one of you right now would you just would you just keep your eyes closed you can you can keep your hands up you can put up down for a moment we're just gonna we're gonna go a little bit deeper into this but I want you to stay in this in the same the same tone right now of just being being ready just being patient for what God's about to do and I want to call the next group right now for those of you still seated and you see all these coming forward to respond to Jesus you may be sitting there and it could be that you're in a really good place with God. You feel like you're, you're in a great place. You're not holding so tightly to something, but you're ready to just say, God, I, I just, I, I want more of you. I, whatever's next, God, I'm, I'm ready for it. There could be some of you seated right now and you could be just feeling resistant to what Jesus is wanting to do in your life. And you're saying, it's, it's too important to me to let go. Really for both groups, I believe that in the next few moments, I believe God wants to still speak to you. He loves you. He's not mad at you, but he wants relationship with you. Remember, he's, his will isn't some mystic thing. It's not something super complicated. It's simply that you would know him, that you would worship him. And to join these here at the front, because all we're going to do in the next few moments is we're going to press in to Jesus. And we're going to allow him to speak to our hearts. But even before you know what the question is, even before you know what Jesus is about to call you to, because remember, even in that moment when, when Jesus called Simon, he, he, didn't, he, didn't say, he didn't say, hey, drop your nets. I'm going to make you a fisher of men. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually ask you to heal the sick. I'm going to ask you to, to, to raise, raise the dead to life. I'm going to ask you to go do all these things. I'm going to ask you to go do this, this, this. He didn't, he didn't map all of it out for him. He didn't tell him that, one day he would experience the same 
death that Jesus would experience, that Simon would be crucified. In fact, he was crucified upside down. He didn't tell him that he would have to go through and he didn't even tell him that, hey, there'd be a time when, you know, you choose to follow me, but you know what? There's gonna be a really rough time where I'm gonna, I'm gonna die and then what's gonna happen is people are gonna ask you if, if you know me and you're gonna d- deny me three times. He didn't tell him that in that moment that he'd have to go through and bear some of these different struggles, different things, because honestly, I feel like if he were to reveal all those things to Simon right then and there, I think maybe he'd be a little bit more freaked out. He'd be so scared, he'd say, me? No, there's no way I can do that. Jesus, I don't know if I can follow you. But in that moment, what, what Jesus did is he said, just trust me. Drop your nets and follow me. I will show you how to fish for people. It kind of brings all the pressure off of you. And so right now, even tonight, you don't have to figure out, you, you, you don't have to some, come up with some creative idea of how God's going to use you. You can just trust simply that God's going to speak to you. You can just trust that God's going God's to reveal it to you. And so really all across this place, before you even know what the question is, even before you know what, what ultimately is next, God wants to speak to you in a way that just says, trust me, drop your nets, and follow me. So if you're seated and you want to follow Jesus, and you say, I'm not going to turn back, I'm going to keep my eyes fixed on him, and I'm ready to receive everything that he has for me, would you stand to your feet right now? If you're seated right now and you want to follow Jesus, you said, I want everything he has for me. I want to say yes to Jesus before he asks the question. Would you stand to your feet right now and come join all those who are seated, who are standing right here? We're going to press in closer to Jesus. Right now, could you have everyone close your eyes right now? I want you right now just imagine there's nobody else in this room. I know it's hard to imagine because you got people next to you, but just imagine right now with your eyes closed, it's just you and Jesus. It's just you and Him. You may even imagine right now that you're back home, you're in your room, you don't have siblings or anyone distracting you, you have just time alone right now. You've just chosen to set this time aside to say, Jesus, I'm here. My prayer has been tonight that this night would be authentic, that this would be genuine. This isn't some emotional response. This isn't something where it's just some hype thing that, I mean, I just got kind of dragged into doing something, but it would be a genuine you saying yes to Jesus before you even know what the question is say Jesus I trust you right here we're in an atmosphere it's a good setting and God can speak to you right now All you're responsible for right now is to listen. To listen to Jesus. Father, I thank you for every single student here, for every leader. God, everybody that's choosing in this moment to respond to you. Father, you sent your son Jesus to this earth because somehow you believe there is something in us that you loved enough to call out of us. God, you see us and you named us. You gave us a new, a fresh start in you, Jesus. But Father, you look across this room and you see individuals 
who are ready, who are willing. And you see purpose. You see a plan. You see a hope. There's a future. You're not done with them. There's tomorrow. And there's right now. Father, right now, I pray that you would be faithful to your word. Your word will not turn void. God, what you said in your word, I believe is true. God, we are standing here together in unity, knowing that Jesus, you call your people and you call them by name. And God, let us not overcomplicate your will, but let us listen in to your simple, good, pleasing, and perfect will. Father, we trust you. Jesus, we just fix our eyes on you right now. We're not concerned with what's around us. We just want to look at you, Jesus. And when we look at you, we see your face, Jesus. And you're smiling. You're not mad at us. There's hope in your eyes, Jesus. Because you see something in us that we can't see in ourselves. You see giftings. You see things that you've given these, these students. And there are, there are such divine gifts inside of some of these students, God. There's a voice. For some of them, God, there are, there are giftings, a musical gifting, an anointing through music. God, you've gifted athletes in this place. God, you've gifted minds. They're brilliant ideas that you've given. But Lord, we even set those aside right now because it's not about the gifts. It's about you. You're the giver. And Jesus, we trust you. Whatever you say, God, however you want to use these gifts, God, they're not ours. They're yours. Father, there are pastors in this place. I just believe so strongly right now, God is raising up a next generation of pastors. Your shepherds. You're going to take care of the flock. There's evangelists. God's put a voice in you, a burden for the lost. You're going to go rescue those who are lost with the message of truth. I believe there's teachers. God's giving you a burden for education to bring truth back into the education system. To teach the word of God. To make known his promises. I believe there are missionaries. God's calling you right now back to your home. God's putting people in your thoughts right now. Family members that need Jesus. Friends who are wandering. They don't have the same hope of Jesus. God's giving you a burden for those who are lost. It's a growing conviction. God's calling you to be a missionary. God's calling you to a people group. Some of you got a burden on your heart for a country. God's calling you to unreached people. To go where no one else is willing to go. You say, God, I, I lay my life down. I trust you with my life. I don't care how dangerous it is. Lord, I don't even care if I die, but at least people will know you. I believe there are pioneers in here, church planters. God's giving you ideas for planting a church, maybe starting a campus club at your school, an innovative way. God ideas. You couldn't think that up. God gave you that.
believe there are lawyers in this place. You got heart for the justice system. You say, I, I just believe for justice, even in my own day, in my country. God's calling you to be, some of you, a politician. I want to bring hope. I want to bring light to a dark place, in the dark place of the politics of our country. I want to bring hope. I want to bring light. Right now, with your eyes closed, looking and gazing upon the face of Jesus. There's hope in his eyes, a smile on his face, and he says, come to me, follow me. I wanna show you a life worth living. A lot of people are, worth, are, 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 are willing to die for a cause. You're willing to die for a cause. But I believe God's rising up a generation who are willing to even do the harder thing and to live for it, to live boldly, to live courageously. And you say, even though I don't know what it looks like, even though I may step out onto the water and I don't know if I'll sink, but Jesus, I just believe that you'll keep me afloat. Jesus, you'll take care of me. Just trust in Jesus. Holy Spirit, speak. Your servants are listening right now. In Jesus' name, speak. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear your Spirit speaking. Call them in Jesus' name. same moment, the same mode of worship, in the same atmosphere, we're going to enter into a song. And I encourage you right now, just as a response, even before, some of you, God's already revealing these things. He's, he's giving you these. Some of you, you don't even know yet, but God's just wanting you to say yes to Him. Would you just lift your hands all across this place? Lift your hands to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I'm ready. I want to follow you wherever you go I go whatever you say I do in Jesus name let's worship the Lord right now the world. 